Hello, welcome to Insights for Health with Dr. Ree. In the last lecture, I uh, talked to you about insulin resistance and the uh, most practical ways of reducing insulin resistance I mentioned were one, intermittent fasting, two, cardiovascular exercise, uh, which could be hiking or walking. Today, I wanna talk to you about intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? Intermittent, uh, as the word implies, means that you uh, fast for a certain period of time and you eat for another period of time. So intermittently, you fast and you eat. Uh, but the focus is on the benefits of fasting. So what is the intermittent fasting uh, like? What kind of schedule uh, could you follow? Uh, I, let me give you a couple of examples, but you can actually do your uh, most practical uh, application of uh, your lifestyle uh, of when you wanna apply the intermittent fasting and intermittent eating. So if you look at the uh, slide here, uh, one option is to fast between 8 p.m. to 12 noon so that's 16 hours, and eat uh, between 12 noon to 8, hour, uh, 8 p.m., so that's eight hours. Um, or uh, if you're a traditional uh, early uh, breakfast eater, you fast between 4 p.m. to 8 a.m., that's 16 hours, and then you eat uh, between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., so that's the eight hours. So you can have uh, one or the other, or your own intermittent fasting schedule, but these actually uh, tend to work the best for most people. Now, uh, intermittent fasting, there's a, a caveat, and that is if you are actually a uh, brittle diabetic or an elderly um, or a child or someone with serious medical condition, you need to consult with your doctor. But for most of you, uh, this intermittent fasting uh, should give you a lot of benefits in your life. So, uh, intermittent fasting uh, starts with understanding of insulin. Uh, insulin is actually a hormone of storage. That's when uh, uh, storage and uh, absorption of nutrition uh, occurs when you eat, right? Uh, and insulin is activated in response to your feeding. Uh, whether uh, you eat any kind of food, uh, usually insulin is uh, activated. But uh, insulin primarily stimulates the absorption of sugar, uh, blood sugar, into the cells. Now, when insulin is working, uh, your anti-aging or rejuvenating or re your repair processes actually stop. So uh, the whole point of doing intermittent fasting is minimizing the activation or the working of insulin. So remember, Insulin is your friend, but you want to optimize use of it and minimize uh, your use of the insulin. Uh, as you know, insulin is produced by the pancreas here, and the less insulin production and less insulin uh, use, more efficient your body gets when it's uh, trying to respond to insulin. Okay, so with that, uh, let's go further. So when you actually have uh, insulin, uh, production or insulin release to almost zero, a fat breakdown occurs. So this is how you lose uh, belly fat, for example. So uh, only way for you to uh, have insulin level pretty close to zero is to fast, right? So if you look at the graph here or the chart here, if you, uh, for the first six hours after you eat, you use the sugar or uh, energy from the last meal. And then for the next eight hours, you use sugar from the blood or glycogen, which is the st stored uh, sugar uh, either in your uh, muscle or your liver, but your liver primarily. And then you start burning fat uh, at about 14 to 16 hours. And then if you go into about 18 hours of fasting, then you're really burning fat. So when you're burning fat, you lose weight, but that's not the only benefit. Let's look at additional benefits. So if you look at the chart, all the benefits are organized by the system. In the brain, your cognition improves and you, are, you become more resistant to brain injury uh, because there's this uh, protein that gets activated and it's called BDNF. 
Uh, BDNF is short for brain derived uh, neurotrophic factor. So brain B D N F. So brain makes this protein, and then it's neurotrophic means it promotes the growth, promotes the growth. Troph means growth. It promotes the growth of neurons, the brain cell, and it's a factor. It's, an, uh, it's a uh, protein that actually stimulates this, um, uh, this event, brain growth. And so when the brain is able to make more synapses or better connections, then, then it becomes resistant to injury. And if, if it makes better connections, you actually are able to also have better cognition, better cognitive ability. So when you fast, you're actually fine tuning and upgrading your brain. And so don't think of fasting as starving yourself or depriving yourself. Think of it as brain upgrade. The next thing that happens in, uh, in the cardiovascular system is uh, it brain, uh, initially there's a little bit of stress, but you become more resilient to stress and your blood pressure drops. And in the adipose tissue, fat breaks down. So that's how you lose weight. And then in the muscle, your insulin sensitivity becomes increased, so you become more, much more responsive to insulin. And your endurance level goes up and your inflammation goes down. And in the blood, because the fat broke down, your ketones, uh, your body actually goes into healthy ketosis. So ketone bodies or ketones become produced. And those uh, products actually go past the uh, uh, blood brain barrier and when the ketone bodies end up in the brain ketone bodies are able to stimulate uh, BDNF brain derived neurotrophic factor so it in turn improves cognition and makes your brain more resistant to injury which is great and then in the blood once again um, this happens and in the liver uh, fat storage becomes reduced and liver also becomes more insulin sensitive and then in the intestines uh, the motility the mobility uh, becomes improved so uh, constipation uh, becomes relieved or you eliminate constipation and you reduce inflammation in your in your gut so if you have an inflammatory bowel disease fasting can help you so these are all the benefits so in light of all these benefits there is no reason not to try this, not to give your body, your body some significant rest from eating a lot of food. Because um, in the past, eating was such, you know, something that was very, very important because food used to be very scarce, you know, even 50, 100 years ago, right? But now there's so much food that because of overfeeding, we're having this problem. So the, the pendulum is swinging the other way. So there's a, a, a fine balance between eating and fasting and the, the best balance based on the research seems to be for most people, 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating. So um, what kind of cellular mechanism uh, drives this um, intermittent fasting benefit? Uh, it's called autophagy. Autophagy means auto self phagy means eating so self-eating and it what it does is that inside the cells there's all these old parts and parts that are that are not working smoothly so uh, your cells are able to break them down with enzymes and replace the old replace the old parts with the new parts so your body your cells become brand new become renewed uh, rejuvenated so uh, if you can do this just by fasting, there's no reason not to fast, right? And this mechanism was discovered, in two, um, discovered by Dr. Osumi. And in 2016, uh, he actually uh, won the Nobel Prize for having discovered this mechanism. And you know, this is his lifetime's work. Um, and so inside the cell, as I mentioned, the, um, you actually have these damaged uh, parts uh, becoming replaced. And uh, uh, in the old um, uh, documentation, um, uh, like uh, the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1531, it says, I die daily and 
This is a physical, uh, physical uh, actual phenomenon of dying daily. You, you yourself com don't completely die, but your old parts die. So you can become renewed. So there is some spiritual lesson that you can gain from this physical phenomenon. And I think uh, something that happens physically can translate to a spiritual renewal as well. So uh, fasting uh, is something that a lot of the uh, religions actually promote uh, on a regular basis for spiritual renewal or better meditation. And this is the reason why, because your brain cells and your body parts become renewed. And it's something to think about. So, uh, what do you eat after you fasted? Uh, I would like to uh, recommend rainbow colored food. Rainbow colored food, as you can see, actually includes all the rainbow colors here. Um, you, you actually have bell peppers and red, uh, orange and yellow. And then you have uh, greens uh, with spring mix avocado. And then you have uh, blue indigo violet in berries. And if you combine all the lights, actually you get white, right? So you have some nuts that are white. So these are the colored foods, um, rainbow colored foods and different colors, that natural colors that actually promote amazing uh, wellness in your body. And in the next lecture, I want to talk to you more about the full benefits of rainbow colored foods. Until next time, stay healthy.